real thing now. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> okay, same rules, 15 minutes. Use it any time you like. If you've got any time over at the end, the questions this time will go to the Progressive Conservative Party. Okay. Thank you for giving me this time to speak. <laughs> My name is Lori Gillis, and I'm chair of the Ontario Regional Wind Turbine Working Group. Ontario Regional Wind Turbine Working Group lists representatives from local wind turbine groups from the counties of Gray, Bruce, Simcoe, Dufferin, Huron, Middlesex, Wellington, City of Kawartha Lakes, Toronto, Niagara West Glanbrook, City of Thunder Bay, and the Municipality of Norfolk County. Most would agree that a good quality of life is critical to a strong and thriving tax-paying community. I give you the following information to help you understand how and why this point is being undermined. Many of us in rural Ontario are trying to protect our health, home and community from our own provincial government's imposed law, the Green Energy and Economy Act. Why? We see industrial wind turbines being forced onto communities by a very few landowners, the Ontario government and multinational wind corporations. Without feed-in tariff or FIT contracts, these wind projects could not exist. The Ontario Power Authority is and should be held responsible for taking all steps necessary to ensure that any negative effects resulting from their FIT contract projects be rapidly investigated and rectified and that they put in place without delay policies and procedures that halt, reverse, compensate individuals and communities and prevent such negative effects in the future. We now have neighbours who are suffering ill health after being exposed to wind turbines, some to the point of abandoning homes and farms. We have a senior citizen in the room right now who has had to leave her home. Her home is toxic from wind turbines. Right here. Stefana Johnson cannot live in her own home, which was built for her to age in place. Please consider the message in the following letter from a family who knows firsthand what problems can come from living near wind turbines? The letter reads, It's a tragedy that so many people are being harmed by the negligent operation of industrial wind turbines. It's reckless that these schemes are permitted to go forward when we don't understand the extent of the damage they cause, though we know it's profound. These are unmitigated disasters we are witnessing breach of the public trust and so have no faith in our governments anymore. Consider the burdens. Since 2010, our family has had to rent a safe house to stay at since wind turbines are being dangerously operated 400 meters away from our home. These respite accommodations cost us approximately $1,200 a month we also spend approximately $1,200 a month maintaining our own home, which sits empty, waiting for us to return. Imagine spending this much money on housing and still feeling deprived of the comforts of your own home. Also consider the burdens on health care and other social systems. As an example, the following is a list of medical treatments received by one member of our family since the wind turbines started operating. 33 appointments with a family doctor, two sleep investigations at sleep disorder clinics, investigations by specialists, ultrasounds, CAT scans and other procedures, two MRIs, heart monitoring, stress test, numerous EKGs and blood work, three emergency room visits, and the list goes on. How much evidence do decision makers need before they recognize that these problems need to be addressed? Projects should not be allowed to proceed. Contracts should be revoked where operators are demonstrating negligence. Negligent people should be removed from office and criminals should be put in jail. End of letter. Farms that count on a working line of credit to survive are being denied as seen in a letter provided from the Royal Bank to Paul Thompson of Amaranth Township. Mr. Thompson is considered a high-value client with the bank, 
However, his property is considered high risk because of the health risks from the turbine transformer station nearby. The bank says the marketability of Mr. Thompson's property may be je jeopardized. Without access to adequate working capital, the farm and farm family's very existence is threatened. As well, a municipal property assessment review for Mr. Thompson has lowered his home assessment value by 50%. The board, that board also found that noise contamination from the nearby turbine transformer station had a negative impact on the value and marketability on his property. For those of us who are counting on the equity of our home for our retirement years, both assessment from the bank and MPAC are bad news. I leave it with municipalities to calculate their loss of revenue from lowered MPAC home assessments. A wind turbine installation proposal is enough to discourage home sales and property improvement. We see more studies coming out that show a drastic reduction in sale price for homes near wind turbines as per Ben Lansink appraisals. And we hear from real estate reps that one of the more common questions now is, are there any turbines around or going in near a specific property for sale? Often, if the answer is yes, people will look elsewhere. Another threat to a thriving community is the threat to tourism as quiet retreats, parks, cottage areas, biosphere reserves, and major bird migration routes become noisy, mechanical wind turbine installations complete with access roads, power lines, and thumping blades. With thousands of turbines proposed for rural and northern Ontario, including pristine crown land, the loss of a favorite quiet retreat for many from busy urban areas will be tragic. There is considerable concern for our migrating birds' survival as they try to go through or around the turbine blades, but perhaps that is part of the new green job count, daily bird and bat fatality counters. Over a dozen members of the Ontario Regional Wind Turbine Working Group alone have been or are involved in litigation to try to stop industrial wind turbine installations. Municipalities and individual councillors are being threatened by wind company representatives for setting fees for road use, for passing bylaws to protect health and future community financial well-being, for demanding turbine commissioning bonds or for denying road use agreements, all brought forward in an effort to slow or stop turbines from being built next to their constituents. Grey Highlands has been threatened by federal Liberal Party President Mike Crawley's AIM IPC Suez Wind Company. Aaron Eldersley has been threatened by Leader Wind. West Grey has been threatened by Next Era. That's what this headline is about. Blue Water has also been threatened by Next Era. Wayne Fleet is currently in court with Vyland Power. And the city of Thunder Bay has been threatened by Horizon Wind. On March 7, 2013, Justice Cromwell of the Supreme Court of Canada clarified the law applicable to damages claims against public authorities for injurious affection when no land is taken under Ontario's Expropriations Act and similar statutes in other provinces, for example, in cases where the land in question has not been expropriated but the defendant's conduct substantially and unreasonably interferes with the plaintiff's use or enjoyment of his or her land. Property owners who suffer substantial interference from the construction of public works can still be compensated for the injurious affection that results from interference. Surely we can find a better route to a solution than the burden of more legal action. There was a very strong message sent to the provincial government in the last election when Liberals lost 19 seats. It's time to rein this industry in. The people of this province are the government and we will continue to protect our health, our homes, our communities in the next election. It is not acceptable for an industry to continue to harm our communities under the guise of a provincial policy. Thank you. Very good. You've left some time, which is great. 
And uh, the questions go to the PCs this time in about four minutes. Monty. Great. Well, thank you, and thank you very much. That was a, a very well done presentation and a, an excellent uh, package. Uh, I'm very well uh, aware of the issue. Uh, in my riding of Lambton, Kent, Middlesex, by the end of phase three, there's going to be 1,200 wind turbines uh, built in my riding. I've, I've long been on the record saying the greatest injustice of the Dalton, McGuinty, Kathleen Wynn Liberals is sitting in this building behind a desk and telling people in rural Ontario where these turbines are going. It's an absolute disgrace. Uh, we introduced uh, our party three uh, bills and motions uh, last year. One was to restore local decision making. Uh, the second was to have a moratorium until health studies are done, and our leader, Tim Hudak, uh, introduced a bill to, to scrap the FIT program, as you, you talked about. Uh, of course, all of three were defeated by the Liberals with the help of the, uh, the NDP, so uh, we're, we're fighting hard on this. But what I want to know is, what's your opinion, uh, living in rural Ontario, watching uh, the Liberal government cancel power plants because communities were upset, yet they continue to... Uh, force wind turbines in the people of rural Ontario? We matter too. That's my opinion. And every time another turbine project goes in, a whole bunch more people end up sick. And it's not okay to keep doing this to us out there. I'm sorry, it's just not. And the people out in rural Ontario are, are looking at the government now with total mistrust. They have absolutely no faith in, in almost any of you anymore. So uh, looking at this issue and, and taking it seriously and hearing what's happening, listen to the people who are living it instead of engineers computer modeling and some expert reading a pile of papers telling you everything's okay. Everything is not okay. There's a recent uh, project that's gone into my own community of Grey Highlands. It would be with the new regulation setbacks of 550 meters plus, and we have people there who are so sick. One's already left their home. Another is, is desperately trying to, to, to convince themselves that they don't have to, but they know that they're going to have to. They're sick. They can't live there. They don't feel safe in their own home. There's a couple of other families who can't sleep at night. One fellow's missed time at work. Another fellow's been to the emergency room more than once. Um, this is what's going on every time one of these projects go in. And you mentioned, uh, sorry, you mentioned uh, the feed in tariff program. There was a report that came out this week showing uh, within two years, uh, the average homeowner's bill is going to be increasing monthly, uh, $38, and that full amount is attributed to uh, this government's uh, energy experiments. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's driving jobs out of the province. It's uh, yes. dividing communities, oh, yes. dividing families. I mean, I hear it time and time again. It's, uh, it's just an absolute uh, tragedy. Uh, in this it's an unmitigated you know, disaster. Province. The letter writer is absolutely correct. An yeah. unmitigated disaster for our communities, for our families, and for the future of this province. I suspect by the time we're done adding up the costs of all of this, it's yeah. such a waste. For the people who are sitting here looking for money, for elderly people, and I used to work in the kitchen of a nursing home, take them to heart because they need help. They need more hands working there. The people who have developmentally challenged older children, I have friends like that too. They need that money, not the, multi not the multinational wind corporations. Okay. Thank you. Uh, no, thank you very much. I don't have any further questions. Thanks. Thank you. All right, thank you for coming. Thank Thanks. you for waiting. And no problem. Uh, great presentation. Thank you. Thank you.